Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. So this is going to be our 2020-2021 college basketball preview for the Texas Longhorns. Guys, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. I know I said I was done with Shaka. I know where I was at after that horrible West Virginia loss last year. I made some videos along the way for those of you who followed any of our college basketball content. Most recent one I did was probably when Greg Brown committed, but we'll touch on everything. While you're here, hit that like button. I'm so thankful. It's a week of thanks. Holiday coming up, Thanksgiving, giving thanks. Thank you for everyone that continues to support our content on this channel. It means the world to me. I know it means the world to Tran and everybody else who is vested in this channel. My wife, who helps with a lot of the thumbnails and, and creative aspect of this. We're all very, very thankful at Fanatic Perspective. So hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Now, before I get to the men's basketball team, which is what I'll cover mostly, I do want to give a shout out to our young ladies, the women's basketball team, who is coming into the season with a new coach, Big Schaefer, taking, Aaron, taking over for Karen Ashton uh, and Vic Schaefer coming from Mississippi State, who was one of the best coaches in the country, had Mississippi State over there rolling, Elite Eights, Final Fours. Who knows where they would have ended up if the season, this past season, wasn't canceled for COVID, but now he's here. My girl, Charlie Collier, at center. They should be rocking and rolling. Um, and the recruiting aspect is already, they've already hit the ground running with five star ladies coming into this program. So I'm excited to see what the, how the women's basketball program progresses. Uh, you know, we're Big 12 basketball, very, very tough. Baylor women, Baylor men, you know, outstanding programs. So as Vic Schaefer is here, and, and, and hopefully he's that spark, that elite coach that we have, great hire, in my opinion, by Chris Del Conte to uh, help that women's program ascend. We're already seeing the results in the recruiting aspect. Now, moving over to the men's. Guys, they're returning everyone from 2019, 2020. Now, the season was cut short. They finished 19 and 12. All hope was lost after that West Virginia debacle. They had injuries, wing position, every, every you know, guards, they were okay. But across the team, they were injured. Uh, to the point where we're talking about nine guys available, scholarship players, guys that hadn't played a whole lot throughout the season. And they were ready when called upon and, and went on a little bit of a streak to end the year. Now, they they the last game I went to was the last game they played against Oklahoma State at home, and they got smashed. And I think they were just – honestly, they were just tired. But uh, and that was before the uh, Big 12 tournament and then the ultimate cancellation. But – they figured something out and at least got some other guys on the roster ramped up. And I think that's going to pay off in this season. A lot of competition for playing time. Competition in terms of the schedule. This, this year's schedule is brutal. But I also think with the team that Texas now has, Shaka Smart, you know, what he's how he's recruited however you feel about Shaka Smart and the win-loss column the lack of success he's had here in regards to the NCAA NCAA tournament the lack of success he's had just in terms of the Big 12 and and, and trying to dethrone Kansas what which many of us are trying to do you know as good as Baylor is that's goal for them as well right and, you know Baylor coaches Paul I believe they're number one AP poll they're number two but you know, you got Baylor, Kansas, West Virginia, Tech, Texas, all top 25 teams preseason in both polls. So when you look at this particular team for Texas and returning every single person that was on the team last year, and then you add this is this is this is what makes this really exciting. When you add a Greg Brown, and people are gonna throw out comps all over the place, but Greg Brown, five star here. Went to high school in Vandergrove here in Austin, Texas. Father and mother, both UT. Father played football at UT. And um, his mother was an athlete as well. But his presence, that 
win for Shaka Smart. And yeah, you know, some people may say, oh, it's a local one, blah, blah, blah. But the heat was on Shaka Smart. Me, I was putting heat on them. Everybody else that watched this team and, and was frustrated with the way the offense was running and not seeing some of that intensity on the defensive end of the floor all the time. They started to find themselves in that late rotation, like I said earlier. And when you add a Greg Brown in the mix, now what type of player is Texas getting in that regard? Uh, going back to that, right? It's one of the most explosive freshmen I've seen in a long time. Um, you know, especially for for purposes and the extent of what Texas is getting. He's He's got athleticism. You know, you look at what Duke got with Zion Williamson. Now, he's not he's not Zion Williamson in terms of hype and number one overall talent, but in terms of what he can do above the rim athletically and those things trend. This is where we've got to see the game evolve for, for Greg Brown and Shaka smart, getting the best out of the player before he goes to the NBA. Translating that athleticism, not just above the rim and featuring him. Cause we have, we have guys on this team that need to be featured as well athletically, but also defensively. Because with the experience that this basketball team has, when you have a senior guard led by Matt Coleman, a guy like a Courtney Ramey who's played a ton of basketball here, another senior in Andrew Jones. We all know Andrew Jones's amazing story. He's now two years removed from the cancer and now getting his body back to where he was pre-cancer, where he was really, really starting to come on before, you know, just battling life. You have guard play in conjunction with Jericho Sims returning. The development of Kai Jones, Shaka Smart preseason press conference already saying Kai Jones is the most improved player on my roster this year. They have, And they also have a diverse group of bigs that they can kind of rotate and feature in terms of skill set, right? Jericho Sims, another athletic diamond, dynamo who developed a lot last season after – you know, kind of being behind Mo Obama, kind of being behind Jackson Hayes, came into his own, really, really developed nicely. Uh, uh, when he went down, uh, Royce Ham stepped up. Royce Ham stepped up, particularly on the defensive end. Hustle tonics, <laughs> I, I like to call him, just out there, um, you know, and, and he's somebody who's grown physically in terms of his physical development, his body in the program, excellent shot blocker, excellent timing around the rim. It's not super skilled, uh, but has all the hustle and the heart in the world, and you want that from your bigs. You have a guy who's more of a cerebral player, and a Kamaka Hepa, who from Alaska, I think can be a more skilled player than what he's shown here so far, but he's got to be more aggressive. He's got a nice stroke shooting the basketball. Want to see some more opportunities for him, letting it go, maybe being even a stretch big for us. Speaking of stretch bigs, you got Will Baker, who was a big recruit. Also from the Austin area, courtesy of Westlake, who can be a stretch big, played had had very little confidence throughout his freshman year until he was he had to play. We had no choice. And you started to see the light come off for Will Baker towards the end of the season. Now with Will, my thing is consistency with his shooting because he'll get his minutes, especially if he's able to hit his jumpers uh, as a left-handed big pick and pop. And then on top of that, he can put the ball on the floor and go and dunk on somebody, as you showed in the Kansas State game last year. I'd like – Will Baker was a borderline five-star recruit locally as well. So the development there, again, on the coaching staff, I, I, I just like the diversity we have with, with our big men uh, uh, down low. And then you're adding Greg Brown to the mix, who, you know, he'll play some three and some four for us, but – the way this brother attacks the rim, it's like a young Vince Carter. I'm not even trying to – this isn't hyperbole in terms of his athleticism because he is that type of uh, athlete, and he's six foot nine. He can put the ball on the floor. He can shoot it. Um, we'll see where his shooting is at as a freshman. So a lot of our freshmen, the guys we brought in here, have struggled with their jumpers early on, even on open looks. But what I need from Greg Brown is to have that same level of kill mode going to the basket that he had at Vandergriff last year as a senior in high school. That's what made him a McDonald's All-American. That's what made him one of the best recruits in the country and somebody who was actually being considered to go to the G League with Jalen Green. That's the type of – that's the type of – and that's what's going to be so exciting to see at the drum when we see these guys play. 
the elite competition. That's where my guards come in. Matt Coleman, you've played more basketball than anybody else on this roster. It's time, brother. And, and we've seen it in spurts from Matt. But we've also seen Matt disappear. Matt, good free throw shooter. He's really come along as a three-point shooter. But not just taking, you know, taking more of the leadership reins in terms of running the team and getting us into good offense, but also picking other guys up, making teammates around him better, being that cerebral point guard. Courtney Ramey right now probably has a little bit more of those playmaking skills, isn't as good a shooter. And then Andrew Jones, Jace Febris, you got shooters. And that's the beauty of this team this year. And that's why I'm, I'm excited because every type of player you want, you got it. We talk about our wings, uh, uh, Febris, Brown, I'll throw in with the wings, Brock Cunningham, who is your s captain scrap, okay? You need to go lock somebody down or guard somebody. He's going to give you maximum effort. He plays very well off the ball, offensively cutting. He's uh, Chuck Smart has been saying since last season is our best offensive rebounder. He'll get minutes in big games. Hey, when we got to go out and guard, somebody needs to guard Jared Butler. He's going off on, on, on Baylor. We'll throw Brock Cunningham at him. Like, and that's where people like that, they'll get minutes over somebody who's not playing, maybe more talented, but not playing as hard because that's what Shaka has to instill with this culture. And, he, and they really came along something with Brock Cunningham when he got the opportunity to play and get minutes and, and, and develop some confidence in himself. So I love this rotation. The, the thing is where, you know, who, who, who are the people that are going to be the odd man out? I thought Jared Liddell was going to take it to step forward. He was a big recruit out of San Antonio area uh, a couple years ago, got injured and, you know, didn't, and after having a really big, you know, start to the season really tailed off. Can he show some, some range on his jumper, you know, especially in the corner being able to slash, he's a six, eight, six, nine guy, the height, you know, another wing guy in a Donovan Williams who, you know, had, was was very good his freshman year as well, showed a lot of confidence, was also trying to duck on people and can shoot it a little bit. Um, can he develop his skill level? Because Donovan Williams is another guy who, after some of these guards leave, that's somebody who may be more featured his last couple of years of college. So it's a lot on the table for this entire basketball team. Think about all the names we had to break down here. Uh, in terms of this roster, but I'm excited. I mean, but, but the thing is, when you look at this schedule, now we open up with Rio Grande Valley, but third game of the season, number three, Villanova. Same week. So December 6th, we play Nova. December 13th, we play number two, Baylor. And we start to get into our Big 12 schedule. Y'all know the gauntlet, Kansas, Tech, West Virginia, we talked about already. Uh, then we have... Uh, Big 12 SEC matchup. We were matched up this year with Kentucky. Another marquee matchup. These are all fantastic reps for the eventual run that I hope we can go on in the NCAA tournament because everything's there. You talk about the Jay Billises, the Jay Williams of the world. We talk about senior guard play in the NCAA. Check that box for Texas. A coach that's led a team to a Final Four and has success. Check that box for Texas. That young freshman who's got NBA talent that can, you know, change change the outcome of the game. Check that box for Texas. Mobile bigs, you know, athletic bigs. Kai Jones, most improved player. Jericho Sims. Check that box for Texas. Shooting. I know it's a question mark right now for a lot of folks. Coming off of last season where Andrew Jones ended up, Jace Febris, Matt Coleman. I think that's a check for Texas. My thing is, I would like to see Shaka with the amount of guys he has and the amount of guys he can play. I'd like to see them turn up the volume, turn up the heat on some people and 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 have a little bit more of that havoc. A little bit. You may not have the same skill level because we're bigger. And that VCU team that he coached back in the day, they were more, you know, smaller, scrappy dudes where he had the stretch big and, and you know, they would press. But the amount of of the amount of different players and, and, and things, the options are endless, but I think that people that are not believers in Shaka Smart, and I'm so skeptical myself, 
It's like, can he take advantage of this? I know we got KT Turner over from SMU, who's, you know, filling in. We lost some really good coaches off of this staff. Uh, Jai Lucas actually went over to Kentucky. So this is going to be interesting uh, in, in terms of the season, but I think it's going to be fun. I think Texas is going to take their L's in terms of, you know, some of these big games. I think they'll win some, they'll, they'll lose some in those head-to-head -head matchups, especially early uh, where they're, I think they're still trying to shackle, you know, going from having nine people available total at times, I think it got down to maybe seven to the whole rosters now available again. And, and, you know, some guys are close. I know he mentioned six people in, in you know, in particular who have kind of separated themselves from the whole group. I believe that was Matt Coleman, Courtney Ramey, Andrew Jones, Greg Brown, Kai Jones, and Jericho Sims. So how he figures that out in terms of the starting lineup, we'll let them figure that out. But the bench is deep. You got a lot to throw to match up with against the Baylors. You know what Scott Drew's going to do in terms of his zone. You know what Bill Self's going to have in terms of the, you know, some of the motion that Kansas runs and, and how effective they've been. So many great guards that they've developed year in, year out, and since the league, they always have a mobile big in there. You know what Huggy Bear is going to do at West Virginia and Chris Beard at Texas Tech. Shaka, you got everything you could possibly – all the boxes are checked. Got to see it come through. I'm drinking the Kool-Aid, though. I'm excited. I can't wait to get to some games this year and check these brothers out. Um, I think this, it's going to be a fun, explosive bunch. I think we're going to see – give Greg Brown some time. I know I said Vince Carter athleticism, but give him some time. I think he'll be more effective than even Mo Bamba was here. More Jackson Hages. But from a wing perspective, which Texas really hasn't seen since Kevin Durant, not saying he's the scorer of, of, of or, or has any of that prowess, but uh, in terms of the excitement level and what he can bring to this basketball team in conjunction with the experience and the talent that's already here, I cannot wait to see what this group does. I'm really, really excited. I think they have an opportunity not just to compete for the Big 12, but to potentially win the Big 12, especially if Kai Jones is going to come along the way Shaka says he is. I don't, these brothers from Baham, from the Bahamas that have the high GPAs that don't play with that type of athleticism, that doesn't come around very often. That's what we got with Kyle Jam, Kai, yeah, Kai Jones, excuse me. So excited, can barely talk. Guys, thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Check out video. I will be doing a lot more college basketball on this channel. Um, I'm so excited for this season. So excited to see Greg Brown, Matt Coleman senior year. Let's get it. Guys, more is always up.